in these tournaments. Um, in the other, in the other online events like Go for SE two and the ESL Americas Open that we cast, you know those sort of online events are always dominated by Zergs, but uh, not so much here. Um, this time around, as we get into this game, to the upper right side of the map is our blue Terran player from MVP. Came second place yesterday. Can he take a win to move into the finals today? It is Gumiho. Of course, the player he played against yesterday to lose was the Bread Pros player who sits in the bottom left of Dusk Towers. His blockade to the finals, perhaps, from Afrika Freaks. It's our Red Protoss player. It is super. So, we kick things off into Dusk Towers for our first semi final here. And again, we might not be able to catch the other semi final, but uh, we will, of course, at least have the finals coming up after this. There's still, still a good few games on the way here today, guys. As we see so far, so good in terms of looking towards a nice long game or. Not necessarily a nice on game, but at least a nice, uh, you know, not a two, three minute game. Nothing really super crazy going on. In the very early stages of this, we just see the Rax gas opening, which means probably a Reaper expand, maybe a Reactor expand from Gumiho, depends what he's feeling. The Reaper is generally going to be, um, you know, you know, the Reaper is generally going to be kind of a very promising option just to kind of get some information to move around. If you're good like Gumiho and you don't make mistakes and lose your Reaper stupidly uh, the majority of the time, then... It's almost wor always worthwhile to get the Reaper, just because it gives you so much information. And go do all of this, kind of talking him up into a Reaper Expand, and he puts a Marine out. <laughs> so he goes into a Marine here. Um, I mean, at the same time, it's not the best of maps for a Reaper to jump into as well, right? I mean, there's only... There's, it's okay, there's a couple of entrances, but... I guess Marine, let's see where he goes from this. It means he's going to go for a Fast Factory instead. Which may just mean he's going to go into some kind of aggression in towards the mid-game. Some kind of very fast drop play. A fast liberator, perhaps. Let us see. As we see, the Marine just going to be checking for Probe hiding in the corner of his third base. And then is just going to be patrolling back and forth here on the third as well. As we're going to see another Marine coming in. I'm just going to come in and just, again, hold this high ground against anything which tries to come in early on. React on the way down on the barracks now. As the Emotive Ship Core being Corona boosted out from this main base Nexus as well. So... Mothership Core on the way out, we see again another Adept or so being added on. Natural Nexus is on the way up too, and that's going to finish here in just a few moments time. Mothership Core is actually going to start moving across the map as well from Super, so looking to try and get some early information with this. Looking to try and get some, bit of, maybe a bit of damage, you know, if he can pick up a Marine or two, you know, it's a Marine or two he's picked away at, and most of the time you're not going to see any aggression hitting before this Mothership Core makes it back home. That means that the Mothership Core is really in trouble. I think we saw that yesterday, though, when the Mothership Core was out of uh, position and had to actually recall back home to get back in time to recall. And that meant it only had one uh, Photon Overcharge instead of two, which was slightly problematic. I'm not sure if that was yesterday with Super or something that I've just casted again kind of recently, but not 100% sure when exactly. As you see, there's Mothership Core continuing to come across the map. Robo Twilight Council being dropped down. And that's going to be the very standard opening here from Super, which can just lead into so many different things. Big Adept all in with Resonating Glaives, Blink Pressure into, you know, a third base, Big Blink all in as well. I mean, there's so many different ways you can open here with this kind of Robo Twilight combination. It makes it very difficult for the Terran player to figure out what's going on. So, we'll see what he tries to go for here soon, as we see just a Widowmine and a Medivac on the way out of the factory and Starport. So, just kind of... Um, Setting that up early as we're going to see the single SCV actually not mining, currently following the mule around. So a bit of a mistake there by Gumiho, nothing too major. There's this medevac about a pop. We have seen a couple of widow mines already being made and they are currently in the mineral lines. We actually see him lifting and going across the map with his uh, marines. So actually very similar to what we saw Gumiho doing against um, Cyan earlier. Just didn't quite realize it was marines before that reactor. I think it was a reaper expand into the reactor, but well, maybe I'm a bit wrong. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. As we see this Medivac coming across and having a look to see what it can get up to. So Medivac coming across here. And he's going to be coming in towards the main slash natural in a few moments. See a few stalkers starting to warp in. So a few stalkers begin to get warped in here. We see a warpism heading out onto the map. So Super just heading out onto the map with the warpism. As stalkers going to be able to deflect this uh, Medivac. So far just three gates. We have seen the couple of gases take on the natural too. And the Warpism is out here, but only three gateways, so it looks as though it's just going to be an attempt to take the third base very soon. However, that's not going to be successful if you lose the probe to this Medivac and the Marines inside of it. And as we see the Medivac Fitness coming in towards the natural expansion, does not get there though. As we're going to see it being forced away, the Warpism still, you know, this drop's really nice because what I think what um, Super would love to be doing right now is actually moving in towards 
the main, you know, the, his opponent's base, warping and stalkers aggressively and so on. Uh, but that's not the case currently, and that's kind of a little bit of an issue for him as he targets down that medevac to the right hand side. Themeries will fall very quickly, very easily now. As his medevac to the left is still very low, blink not quite finished, so still can't get the kill there. And Gumhook doing a very good job of keeping his opponent pinned back and not able to pressure with these blink stalkers, which was one of the main issues he ran into yesterday, where he kept kind of taking his third base, then a bunch of blink stalkers came across the map, and all of a sudden. He was losing his third base, he couldn't get it away in time, he lost it, and everything just kind of fell apart from there. As we're going to see these Marines medevac over to the 9 o'clock position, just waiting to come back in once more. But this time, Super has felt safe enough to start moving out onto the map and getting ready to... First of all, again, the first things he kind of goes for is trying to clean up these couple of depots, the reactor. But there's a tank out for Gumiho, you know, he's set up safely enough to defend here. As we see, this uh, few stalkers coming up this ramp and in towards the third base. The Fed CC getting ready to float out here perhaps in a few moments time as this uh, Liberator gets cleaned up very very easily. Medivac drop going to come into the third but there's nothing really here to kill just yet so it actually does back away. As he's trying to get that supply depot but has to just fall back. Tanks in position and Gumiho dealing with a lot better today than he was yesterday. And as we see a few Adepts warping in and we are going to see resonating glaives on the way up. And what we generally saw Super playing yesterday was the kind of attempt to go in towards kind of Stalkers and Adepts. And very heavy kind of stalker adept numbers with 1-1 one -one upgrades and just kind of you know with resonating glaives and blink just trying to mass up units and really try and just take really good engagements for himself so that's what we saw a lot of yesterday and maybe it'll be still of what we see again today now 1-1 one -one upgrades on the way he did go into some immortals into some you know that robo production as this medevac stays alive just to drop these marines off and he does get a few worker kills for his trouble so going to be in a great position in economy 55 SCVs to the 52 probes and triple mule on top of that which very soon he'll be able to start landing at his third base. So, um, that's really nice from Gumiho, these continued drops. But again, I mean, we're probably expecting to see a lot of adepts, a lot of stalkers, and then probably in towards the immortal production a little bit later on as well, slowly start adding archons in too. How many gateways are we on? Just three still. Well, if you want to go for this sort of playstyle with kind of mass adept, mass stalker, you need more than three gates, because the idea is you can just make so many of these stalkers and adepts so quickly that it's really going to, you know, they really kind of helps you out so much as we see these stalkers moving forwards. Scan comes down, we are going to see an Observer, I believe, picked off there. Not Wolfism, was it? No, Wolfism's still alive, going in towards the main right now. Then it's going to be walking straight into a turret, it's not going to find any damage just yet. Five more gates on the way up, so eight gates, more like it, if you really want to make this sort of play style work. As we all start to see Immortals being added in as well, I mean, eight gates, just very standard for, um, kind of free bases anyway. No third and fourth gas yet, because again, he's just massing up kind of, not, you know, not high-tech units, he's just going for numbers more so than units as we see these marines, these few tanks start to move out onto the map. And we're going to see Super just pulling away, doesn't want to fight this just yet, them tanks are a little bit scary. If they can drop and get some good shots off, they have a lot of potential to do kind of a lot of damage here. And as these marines moving forward, we're going to see lots of stalkers, a few adepts being warped in. Can super hold on against this push. I think he should be all right. I mean, he's got a plus one armor upgrade. His two two upgrades are starting too, so he's going to take a um, big lead in this game. As you see the first base is keeping track of where that army is. Still in towards the fourth base position. He's not going to find anything here. A few sentries available as well. A couple of force fields could trap in a lot of these marines, and of course the medevacs can evacuate them, but could maybe get a few kills in that uh, if he tries to do that. As you see a few more marines coming forwards, Adepts and a shade forwards, and is this something Super wants to attack into? I'm not too sure, he doesn't go for it. If of course you do shade on top of all these marines and the tanks are sieged, what happens is that the tanks find a fire on the uh, Adepts but do a lot of friendly fire in the process. As you see these marines just pulling back a little bit, we're going to see Gumiho moving forwards onto the map as Whoa, he's actually lifted up, he's not in a good position to engage us yet, now his tanks drop down, but Super has kind of caught him a little bit off guard, he's kind of you know, jumped on Gumiho when he was not expecting it, when he was not ready for this, his tanks are being left behind, the medevacs are not going to stick around and save them, as more marines are starting to come in, and super well, it was a good start to the engagement for him, but the force fields kind of hurt him a little bit in terms of getting towards the tanks, he did end up losing quite a bit, as we're going to see these marines stimming forwards once more, looking to get a few more kills, we're going to see the model going down, there's some adept reinforcements, the uh, warpism will come in to help reinforce this too, there's a little bit of a scrapping fight here. Seems to be going the way of, oh, brilliant pickups on that siege tank. Keeping it alive here in the Medivax for a little while longer. It will be Super who pushes this back in the end. And a Blink Force will pick off one and two more Medivacs. Doesn't want to overcommit though with the siege tank here as well. These shields disappear very quickly. 
We'll see a bunch more Sorgas coming in though, and actually that might be enough Sorgas to blink forwards and get a couple more, there, uh, get a couple more medivacs, get this Liberator too. This Liberator just going down, getting a lot of damage done in the meantime, however. However, that next Liberator is not sieged up just yet, another medivac looking as though it might fall here in a couple of moments, and there it goes down. Nice little blink forwards here to catch that off. As Gumiho falls back to his third base. Scrappy engagement. 2-2 two -two upgrades have kicked in now though for our pros player, which will continue to help him with this composition. As you see, Super going into a fourth base as well. So fourth base on the way up. And we see a Cyclone momentarily locking onto that Observer. Got out of uh, vision range. Bit of a weird. I don't think he actually meant to make the Cyclone. Probably mishit it when he was trying to make a Siege Tank or so. Because at this point of the game, I don't know what the Cyclone really achieves because whatever it locks onto, I mean, Stalkers can blink away, they can lift into a Warp Prism. If he locks onto the Warp Prism, Stalkers can pick it off so easily. I mean, Cyclones don't survive very long at all. They just don't, you know? Cyclones die very, very quickly, basically. As we're going to see, these sentries are going to be able to pick off an SCV here in the center. Marauders are just pulling back up towards the high ground. We're going to see some Adept shading forwards and... Looking to see what they can get up to. In towards the main base they go. Oh, no, they don't. Denied, says Gumiho. As two of them do get in towards the back of the third. They pick off three workers before going down. Two hitting those there because of the extra attack upgrade which they have over the armor of his opponent. 2-2 two -two is on the way for our town player. They'll finish up shortly, but that 3-3 three -three is already coming up for Super. That's going to be here very, very soon. As his fourth base starting to take the grasses here as well. And just continue with this Stalker, Adept, and Mortal composition. Again, very heavy on the gateway unit. It's probably a Guardian Shield there. Not sure if he really wanted to do that. Don't think he wanted to do that at all, actually, as we see. Observer trying to be picked away out. A scan comes down. Doesn't quite catch the Observer, though. As four Liberators on the way up. We're getting to the kind of later stages of this game. And it's perhaps time for Super to start thinking that he can't just win this with Adept, Stalker, and Mortal. Maybe needs a, you know, a Stargate or two. Get that Fleet Beacon down. Start going into the Tempest production, so he has something to deal with. The ever-increasing Liberate account, as we are going to see the main base from Gumiho lifting from the main and going to float over towards the fourth. Uh, so we'll see Super. Is he just going to try and attack into this? I'm not sure if that's the best decision. There's so many Liberators here. Surely he cannot fight into this position. Here we go. Garnish shows up. He blinks forwards. The Liberator is going down very quickly. Some forces coming down as well. Great spell usage here by Super, as he has to blink and pop them, uh, you know, Garnish shows down at the same time. Some force skills coming down as well. But it's just not enough. I mean, this bio is just too strong. It seems, at least. I mean, lots of Marauders here left over, but there's still lots of Immortals, and they get through you know, Marauders very, very quickly as they push this back. Another Blink Force is going to get rid of a Siege Tank, which has been firing throughout this engagement. And Immortals are starting to fall. Another engagement, which seems to go very kind of. You know, neither player really taking a major advantage off the back of this engagement. Super loses a lot of his uh, Siege Tanks, but. Uh, sorry, a lot of his Immortals and a lot of Liberators going down for his opponent. I feel as though he can't attack into this again. Last time it was okay, he could get rid of these Liberators quickly. But now he can't. His Stalker count is not as high as it once was. And I feel as though Super actually has to go into more than anything now. That Stargate and those Tempests. He needs a way to deal with these Liberators. But he just doesn't have it on the map or on the way just yet. I was going to see these Libs sieged up and ready to go once more. I was going to see this Warp Prism coming over to the right hand side of the map and going to be coming in towards the third base and dropping a few more Adepts off here as we have the couple of Adepts moving forwards once more. Still more tanks have been coming out of Gumiho. He's been making sure to remake these, obviously feeling there. An important part of his ability to kind of hold the position on this map as we see Stalkers on the high ground. Well, they are have there is vision of them thanks to these Medivacs. They do have to just blink away at the same time, though. So many Adepts in the mineral line of the third. And we are seeing them getting so many kills here. As a few of them in towards the natural, too. We're going to see a few of them lifted up and a couple of them evacuated. As Gumiho drops down to only 22 workers against 75 probes. So Gumiho is in a lot of trouble in terms of the economy. As Super picks off SCV after SCV over here. And Gumiho now down to just 18 workers. Mules will drop down to try and keep him in this. But he is sitting at less than half of the income of his opponent right now, and well, the gas income is not pretty either. 800 gas coming in per minute from Super, to just the 100 of Gumiho. So Gumiho can basically make Marines, and then Marauder or two, and that is literally it. As we see the, um... Units just coming out, and sitting underneath these, uh, Liberation Zones. Fifth base to the left-hand side, Super getting himself set up over here. Fifth base on the way up as we see these Stalkers, Immortals, Archon, a few sentries. Still not really just teching any further in this game. And 
I understand that he's got a great economy and he can maybe just outproduce his opponent, but it would just be so much safer for him if he just at some point in the last few minutes had started up a Stargate, started up the Tempest, and just got something to start dealing with the Liberators. Even two Tempests will slowly get rid of rid of these Liberators. It forces Gummyho into Vikings, which he can't afford, alongside everything else he wants to build. There's no disadvantage to going for it, basically, which is my, my why I'm really kind of sort of annoyed at Super for not going for this, because he's seen the Liberator camp rise, and he knows it's getting higher and higher, and he can't attack into Gumiho, he can't, he can't take advantage of his larger, you know, of his higher economy and trade right now, because he can't attack into Liberators, so he's just not making any moves to kind of get something done about that. He does start up Cyanic Storm, finally, something a little bit different. He's got a few Archons in this, but again, how do you fight these Liberators? Well, if you catch them off guard and unseized, well, that's definitely one way it can go down. You can see, as soon as they see Jump, he still can't fight into this, and he's going to be chased away, and Gumiho gets a lot of free damage done while our Protoss player just tries to back away from the engagement. Single Observer just sat around trying to keep an eye on what's going on. We're going to see Big Blink Force from these Stalkers again. Two more Liberators going down, just one left over then, which isn't too high a number. Gumiho, though, his army, though, is just so strong, so large, and we need something else here now. We need Storms or so to help get rid of this. I mean, Storm is on the way up, but no High Temple has been walked in just yet, and... Well, Super is still trying to just fight in this position, I feel, as these Marines and Marauders are getting pushed back a little bit. And we see these are death going to move forwards once again, and another Blink Force getting rid of these Liberators, which are the real damage dealers in this army, but at the same time, Gumiho has still got a pretty strong army. He's down so far on workers, but his army's just so powerful that he just keeps on taking these trades here, and he keeps on trading sort of okay. as nice picks up pickups on these Immortals, thanks to the Warpism. Able to make the most of this. Adept's gonna try and get away, shade forwards a little bit as the Warpism will escape with the Immortals inside. And Super, he needs these eye he needs these storms, otherwise he's gonna find himself in a lot of trouble. Fortunately, he is still on a very good economy, so he can reproduce very fast. This resources loss is, yeah, exactly as I thought it was gonna look. Very unfavorable for Super. It's just the fact that he's had so much more economy than his opponent that he's been able to stay in this game. It really is the only thing keeping him in this right now. As his Medivac's gonna heal up. A bunch of these marines, a bunch of these marauders, a couple of tanks got lifted into the medevacs too. Another couple of sentries being warped in, scanned on top of this army as well. And we're gonna see a couple of tanks unloading here on the high ground. We're gonna see these probes under fire. Five workers going down there almost immediately. As these marines, these marauders working their way through an assimilator. A few marines in the center of the map from Gumiho moving over to the left hand side. As another scan comes on top of this army now, Super is gonna. Transfer a lot of his workers over to this fifth base, which is heavily oversaturated. It starts a base to the top left now as well. A few Marines coming in here to see what they can get done. As Gumiho has taken an aggressive position on the map. An aggressive position, which right now is a very good position. As, oh, Mothership Core does not want to go down. I mean, if you can keep that Mothership Core alive, then great. Because it's got phone overcharges. Even a few phone overcharges can go a long way, but it does fall. There's a little bit of shame there. Now, a lot of utility sort of just lost for Super. For no real reason other than the fact that... He uh, just wasn't paying attention to it. As we see, big drop in towards the main base. This is the sort of play we see. As we're going to see the uh, stim coming in, we're going to see pylons uh, being picked off. Cybercore goes down. It's a big pick off when a lot of this army that Super's relying on is, you know, adept and stalker based. As we're going to see Gumiho moving away in time to get away from you. It's coming in towards the main base, just utilizing the strengths of his army. At the same time, we have seen adepts continue to come around the map. He's actually dropped Gumiho back down to only 15 workers now. So Gummy had a quarter of the workers of his opponent down again, less than half the income. Look at that, I mean, so less, you know, so much fewer minerals. Literally no gas being mined right now by Gumiho. As you see a DT over here from Super denying this base from landing, not gonna be able to do anything with this. Literally no gas being mined at all. Gumiho has no gas income, so he can't make liberators anymore. He can't make any more tanks. He's literally just gonna be able to make marines, and that will be it unless he gets back onto that gas in the very near future. As we see the army for Super continuing mass up here, as we are about to take over to the 20 minute mark of this game. And this is some late game TVP we're seeing, but with kind of mid game armies, because neither of them have really gone into that late game setup of Ghost Liberator or Tempest and so on. But we're gonna see Gumiho's army so good at fighting this, just because the Bio can fight so well against this sort of thing, but the Archon's starting to close the distance, the Immortal's starting to get the damage done, and Gumiho is pushed back, and Super, for the first time in a long time, is going to take an army supply lead in this game. As we're going to see the Archon hunting down another Medivac, also another couple of Marines are falling, a couple of Stalkers blink, trying to get those couple more Medivacs. I mean, anything he kills off here is going to be an expensive loss for our terror, and there's a few Marauders just kiting backwards, and backwards, and backwards, as we see him. 
It's falling all the way back now. A few more Marines still up on the on the way in the production tab, but Super looks as though he might just have enough to be able to take in number one of our semi-final here in the duo. You Star Masters number five. We're gonna see another Marauder so sniped on down. A few more units getting picked up into these medivacs, a few more of these units being sent over to the left hand side of the map. As we see this orbital having to lift, having to leave. You're gonna see a sensor tower being picked away at and well that's gonna be pretty much everything else here going down in the next couple of moments. These last few SCVs going down, the mule goes down as well. And well now Gumiho and eight workers still dropping around the map though, still getting damage done himself. That's a lot of probes he will find on this fourth base and he will be able to take or fifth base or whatever base it is getting too high to really count. So a lot of probes he's gonna find so super gonna take a big hit to his economy as well. Gumiho gets his opponent down to 30 workers and still counting as he goes down and down 20 workers 18. He's almost equalized the worker count in this game, and the army counts are still fairly similar, but a big pick off there by this blinking stalkers. As Gumiho continues to fly around, and these low health medivacs are in such a tough spot. A couple of widow mines here looking to pick up some further kills. As we see a few little bit more damage being done in the back of the third base now. Gumiho in a moment will have to lift and leave once again. Blink forwards, another medivac goes down, another two medivacs go down. He actually leaves a bunch of these years behind. He goes back to get them, but he gets the medivac picked off. Major mistake by Gumiho in this position of the game where he cannot be affording to lose these units. We're going to see these uh, couple of Widowmines are going to be going uh, not off. No, it's actually, yes, okay, they do go off, but they get blinked away on, so they don't hit on anything. As we're going to see these stalkers coming over to the left hand side, Marines and Marauders unloading. This base is going to get taken down to the top left. We're going to see these stalkers coming in and blinking forwards. The medevacs go down, that means this drop is over, even if it kills off this base. It means there's no real way out anymore as these Marines on their own are not going to get very much done. The Sorgas will probably blink on top of them and with that we'll see a GG. We will see Super taking game number one of this best of three semi-final and what a game number one now. Than Dusk Towers, mainly the kind of, you know, the ledge around here. Um, you know, this ledge around here. If you can drop tanks off down here, it can be very difficult for the pros to then, you know, defend against this sort of, you know, defend their own third base basically. As we jump into this, let's introduce our players, get our scoreboard set up. That's the top right hand side from MVP, we have the Blue Terran. Let's see it guys, if you're cheering on, Gumiho. And to the bottom left hand side we're going to have the Red Pros player. It is from the Afrika Freaks. It is super. I really think they should add a, uh, on the Liquipedia page for this event, I really think they should add a medals won per team thing because so far MVP has won all but one of the Do You Star Master events. The Do You Star Master again, guys. If you're unfamiliar, it's a $125 cup which takes time, uh, which takes place three times a week, on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. It will be, um, of course, back tomorrow from midday CET, so you guys can tune in once again after that WCS uh, bracket finishes up. Uh, so that'll be again live tomorrow, and um, from midday CET, and then we'll be back next week with more Do You Star Masters from Wednesday, same time, same place. Although next week it'll be a little bit later actually for a lot of people because of the changing clocks. It'll be the same time for you Americans, it'll be an hour later for us Europeans. As you see the Nexus on the way down here for Super. So he's setting himself up into a Nexus, a barracks is being built by Gumiho and sorts up a Reaper as well. And really nothing too surprising at the very start of the game. Both players just gonna be expanding quickly and early on, setting themselves up into the kind of next stage of the mid game uh, or just heading towards a mid game. Now again, we saw a lot of different builds from Super yesterday as he attempted to sort of um, just kind of take himself into, you know, when, when he managed to take down Gumiho 3 games to 2. We saw a lot of good games from Super yesterday with that. We saw him um, using multiple different ways to kind of open with kind of Robo and Twilight Council. As we're going to see the um, Mothership Core on the way out of this Nexus. So maybe should go on the way out of this. I'm gonna see it kind of uh, coming across here in a few moments and uh, looking to get across the map and get some damage done. We're gonna see the uh, Reaper coming in towards the main base too. Gumiho is just gonna have a bit of a look around here to see what's going on, see what is happening. Let's see, if one overcharge pop, it doesn't kill the Reaper, which is a big loss of energy at the start of this game then. That's 50 energy, which might be useful a little bit later on against some kind of you know, with a mind drop or something along those lines, there's something which should be very useful here later on, which now Super is not going to have available to him. I mean, we've seen Super yesterday, for example, when he was dealing with a Widow mind drop and having Stalk in something else elsewhere. He had Stalkers in one base and then he had to drop double for an overcharge, but he wouldn't be able to do that now. 
because they've used that fertility field overcharge, which again gains nothing because the Reaper doesn't even die, just goes back, regenerates, and gets ready to come back in once again. This is not a rerun, guys. I know a lot of you guys are asking that just because we saw this matchup yesterday, but this is a live match. And these guys are head to head for the second time in two days here in the Doyu Cup. And as you see, this Reaper jumping around and gonna find itself or try to find itself a probe kill or so. And we're gonna be seeing the uh, Nexus just jumping back into that. I mean, nothing really too crazy going on. There's a couple of gates. There's the Twilight with the blink on the way. And the robot on the way down. Again, last game, we never really saw this kind of bling play be super effective because Gumiho was doing a great job of distracting Super back at home. It was forced a lot of them stalkers to stay back defending. If we see a tech lab coming down that factory, these three marines are going to be able to move out onto the map as well. So these three marines are moving out onto the map. A couple of widow mines are out here. Medivac will lift those up and it'll be the double widow mine drop while the marines hunt for damage towards the entrance of the main base and maybe towards the third if the pylon's going up over there. Four more gates being built. Wow, we're going to pin to five gate stalker here. So this is going to be very, very aggressive opening this time around from Super. Very different to the last game. And that's what I mean. There's so many different ways you can open off of this Twilight Robo combination. And Gummy Hobo, well, so far he has come in. He has seen the Twilight and the Robo building with that Reaper earlier on. But that's pretty much all he has seen. As he has already come dropping it into the natural here. Stalker's already getting into position with an Adept as well. Marine's coming up this ramp. Maybe she caught his position to pop a foot on overcharge wherever necessary. Those probes fall away and that's going to be one probe. Oh, it's going to be three probes going down. Medvac goes down though at the same time. Marine's in the main. They're going to find themselves trapped now. No real way out. Super just having to pull his probes away once more. It should be able to stabilize against this fairly easily. Going overcharge pop just pick, keep these Marines away. They'll try and get themselves one more uh, probe kill. Maybe even a second probe kill. And that'll be it. So, Gumiho gets a bit of damage done here initially, and does he get that scouting information which he needs? Well, yes he does. He sees the five gateways, so now he knows how many gates his opponent is on. He knows it's Blink Tech. He should be very aware of potential aggression coming in. Which he actually, oh my god, he's actually got a, he's got a Raven up. He's building a Banshee too. Very interesting choice of views. Did he get Cloaking Field? No. No Cloaking Field, so no Banshee Cloak. Just the Raven. And, I mean, I love the Raven for the PDD. The point defense is going to help him a lot in defend, and he also picks off an Observer too. So that's going to be very interesting. We're going to see the uh, Wolf isn't going in towards the main base. going to drop a couple of Adepts off over here to begin with a Siege Tank at the front to help defend as well. Because these Stalkers immediately can't really do too much without the Observer. Makes their lives a little bit more difficult as these Adepts though get a lot of damage done already. A couple of them will cancel their shades in towards the main base. Maybe now they'll start shading over towards the uh, base over here. As we actually see these Stalkers blinking up to the high ground. They're going to get themselves a tank up here in the main. As these uh, Adepts try and find their way to shade away. We're actually going to see the Auto Turret coming down to help deal with these Adepts. Because they are going to shade out and maybe even join up the Stalkers, which are doing a lot of damage done. Wolfism is going to be able to come in and going to be able to rob in a few more units. We're going to see just slowly blinking down to the low ground. And we're um, Provost Player just blinking down one unit at a time. A few more Stalkers being brought into this. Another Auto Turret will come in. Actually, will claim a kill and a second kill nearly on some of these Stalkers, which will continue to try and trade at the front. Banshee, again, not sure what exactly the Banshee is going to bring to this battle. As uh, the Banshee is... Uh, can go down very quickly to these stalkers. I mean, it's high DPS but very fragile. The stalkers can get rid of those banshees very, very quickly here. As that observer is going to go down again, it's going to get low. It's going to get forced back. It does get picked off. And the super is well. He's done a lot of economic damage and he's starting to get himself in a position where he can maybe just win this game with enough stalkers. And man, these blink stalkers are just so good. GG super takes team number two and two zeros. Gumiho 